How was electricity made? From all the remarkable inventions covered on the channel so far, it's clear that we humans are an extremely resourceful group of people. Our resourcefulness has allowed us to generate order out of the chaos of the world, to harness the natural elements and bend them to our will. And perhaps there's no greater example of humanity doing that than the harnessing of electricity to power our lives. In doing so, we've caught lightning in a bottle, quite literally, and changed the way we live forever. Today, we'll dive deep into our past and trace the history of how we got here. So stick around to find out exactly how electricity was made. Early Experiments and Discoveries The start of humanity's understanding of electricity as we know it today came from early experiments performed with static electricity, a phenomenon where electric charge remains stationary on an object, creating an imbalance of electrons or protons. This imbalance can lead to attractive or repulsive forces between objects, like the balloon that sticks to your hair once you rub it. This forms the basis of our understanding of electricity today. Thales of Miletus, who lived around 600 BC, made groundbreaking contributions to early electrical experiments. He observed that when amber was rubbed with fur, it acquired the ability to attract lightweight objects. This phenomenon, while seemingly simple, represented a profound realization that certain materials could generate and hold on to an electrical charge. Advancing the study of electricity much later on, William Gilbert, a 16th century English scientist, conducted extensive investigations into magnetic and electric phenomena. Gilbert's experiments with various substances led to the classification of materials as either electrified or not, contributing significantly to the understanding of static electricity and magnetism. Then, in the 17th century, German scientist and inventor Otto van Goerich made more notable contributions to the field of static electricity. His most famous work was the creation of the sulfur globe, an early electrostatic generator. By rotating the sulfur globe and rubbing it with his hand, Goerich could generate static electricity. This development marked a crucial step forward, demonstrating that electricity could be produced intentionally and harnessed for further experimentation. While these experiments and discoveries might seem trivial today, we wouldn't be where we are today, as the very beginning of our understanding of electricity came from these experiments, setting the stage for further advancements. Volta and the Battery The next big advancement in electricity came from Alessandro Volta, an Italian physicist born in 1745. Volta was a prominent figure in the scientific community of his time, known for his work on electrostatics. His fascination with electricity led him to experiment with various materials, laying the groundwork for his most significant contribution. The voltaic pile emerged in 1800, Volta's most revolutionary invention. It consisted of alternating layers of zinc and copper discs, separated by soaked cardboard or cloth. The interaction between the dissimilar metals and the conducting solution produced a continuous flow of electric current. The voltaic pile went on to become what's known in today's world as a battery. By the way, if you're hooked so far and think you'd like to see more content like this, subscribe to us because there's plenty more where this came from. And to make sure you don't miss out, hit the bell icon. Alessandro Volta's work marked the first time electricity was successfully stored as chemical energy, ready for later use. This changed the game in the scientific community at the time, providing a reliable source of electricity for experiments. Volta's massive contributions are the reason his name probably sounds familiar to you. That's right, the unit used today to measure electric potential, the volt, is named after him. Faraday and Electromagnetic Induction The next major step in electricity generation came from Michael Faraday, a self-taught English scientist born in 1791. His early work as an apprentice bookbinder fueled his passion for science, eventually leading him to become one of the most influential experimentalists in history. In the early 19th century, Faraday conducted a series of groundbreaking experiments. You see, Faraday changed the game for electricity generation by bringing magnets into the mix. One of his most crucial experiments involved moving a magnet near a coil of wire. Faraday observed that this motion induced an electric current in the wire, this discovery, known as electromagnetic induction, laid the foundation for the development of electric generators. 
Faraday's experiments led to the formulation of Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction, which basically states that moving a magnet inside a coil of wire produces electricity within that wire. This groundbreaking law provided a fundamental understanding of how electricity could be generated through the motion of magnets and coils, setting the stage for the practical application of this principle in electric power generation. And soon after, that practical application came to life as the first electric generator was created by Hippolyte Pixie in 1832 that made use of Faraday's law. It used a rotating magnet to induce a continuous alternating current in a coil of wire. And the progress didn't stop there. Almost all electricity generators you see today make use of the same principle as the first. Edison and the DC Era in the late 19th century, Thomas Edison, an American inventor and businessman, emerged as a key figure in the development and popularization of electricity. You see, Thomas Edison's most significant contribution was the creation of the first commercial electric power distribution system. In 1882, he launched the Pearl Street Power Station in New York City, which became the first central power plant to provide electricity to customers. The plant used a variant of the electric generator called a dynamo, which produced direct current. It used mechanical energy supplied by steam engines to turn a coil of wire within a magnetic field, inducing a current through Faraday's law. This marked the beginning of the widespread adoption of electric lighting and signaled the transition from gas lamps to electric bulbs in urban areas. This is also why he's so widely associated with the idea of a light bulb. He powered them. Edison's work ushered in what's known as the direct current, or DC, era. While effective over short distances, DC faced challenges in long-distance transmission. The transmission of DC over longer lines resulted in significant energy losses due to resistive heating, limiting its practicality for widespread distribution. This limitation would become a focal point in the ensuing competition between direct current and another form of current that we'll get to. The war of currents was approaching. Tesla and the alternating current. Nikola Tesla, born in 1856, was a Serbian-American inventor, engineer, and physicist who would revolutionize the field of electricity. Although initially working in the Edison company, his vision diverged from Edison's and he became a proponent of alternating current, or AC systems. He believed it offered significant advantages over DC, which was facing the issues we previously mentioned. The late 19th century witnessed fierce competition between Edison's direct current system and Tesla's alternating current system, known as the War of Currents. Edison, a staunch supporter of DC, sought to discredit AC by emphasizing perceived safety concerns, including the dangers of high voltage alternating current. However, AC's ability to transform voltage before and after transmission via transformers made it superior for long-distance transmission. Nikola Tesla's contribution to the promotion and development of alternating current systems marked a pivotal moment in the war of currents, ultimately leading to the triumph of AC over DC in the electric power industry. Despite some initial resistance, AC was widely adopted soon after. Advancements in Power Plants the era following the War of Currents introduced numerous advancements to centralized power distribution. Steam power plants were already around, but soon hydroelectric power plants also emerged that used the flow of water to generate electricity by turning a turbine. Power generation became a centralized process performed at multiple plants that were interconnected through an efficient power grid. The next to emerge were fossil fuel-based power plants, which became the dominant source of electricity in the 20th century. Coal and natural gas power became commonly used as fuel for these plants, which, although great at producing power, did cause damage to the environment through unclean emissions. Nuclear Power and the Atomic Era The mid-20th century ushered in the Atomic Age, marked by the harnessing of nuclear energy for peaceful purposes, including electricity generation. Nuclear power became a significant player in the global energy landscape, offering a potent and low-carbon alternative to traditional fossil fuel-based power generation. The splitting of the atom, called nuclear fission, releases a significant amount of energy, which is used to generate steam and drive turbines for electricity. Although its high energy density, low carbon emissions, and stable energy output make nuclear power a great option, there have been concerns over its safety. 
the potential for accidents like the Chernobyl disaster in 1986 and the radioactive waste that it produces which must be disposed of responsibly. So, you see, we've come from rubbing amber on fur to observe static electricity to splitting the atom to produce clean energy. Nothing showcases humanity's progress quite like that. And the innovation hasn't stopped there. The 21st century has witnessed a notable shift in focus towards renewable energy sources like solar power from the sun, wind power from the wind's kinetic energy, geothermal energy that harnesses heat from the Earth's interior, all of which are sources that can never run out and have no negative environmental impact. With humanity becoming more and more responsible with the environment and more advanced with technology, the only way forward is upward, and the sky is the limit when it comes to producing energy. Hope you learned something today. Thanks for watching.